Hey guys, it's Charlene. You see all that pink, you know what time it is. It's time for the November release from Pink and Main. So much cuteness with this release. We're going to start out with the November mug. How cute. We've got this little Christmas tree here, the lights that go along with it, and of course, a coordinating die. This is a bonus if you spend a certain amount within a certain period of time. So definitely check this out on the Pink and Main website. I've got the links down below in the description. Next up, we have this snow family. Like, I can't even. You guys, look at how the little kids and the mom and dad, super, super cute. Of course, coordinating dies as well. And going with that same theme of snowmen, we have these super cute snowman peekers. Oh my gosh, you can see them peeking up and over. You've got a side peeker. I mean, these are very, very cute. All kinds of adorable cards. Coordinating dies, of course. And then penguins. Gosh, I just love winter time stamping. It's, you get the cutest little critters. So I'm going to squish their little cheeks. Absolutely adorable. There's a little fireplace with that penguin snuggled in his blanket. Love it. Here we have snow pals. Now these are different from the snowman peekers, but both super, super cute. Definitely different though. And coordinating dies. And I like the trees. They they kind of go along with the styling of the snow snowman. Really cute. Up next is the Home Sweet Home series. So here you have all these wonderful sentiments that are going to go with the two coordinating die sets. They all relate to the home. So you have things like Home Sweet Home. There's no place like home. We're moving. Thank you for your hospitality in case you're staying with someone or something like that. When I'm with you, I'm home. We've moved, I mean, just lots and lots of cute sentiments that can be used with the coordinating die set. So this is gonna create a really pretty house. You can see what it looks like here on the back of the packaging. And then I absolutely love when companies make like a main die set and have coordinating dies that are add-ons. So these are add-ons that go with that home set. This is the winter home add-on die set. So you can see these dies include things like a reindeer, a snowman, trees, some lanterns, a sled, a wreath, all kinds of fun little details that you can add on to your house to make it a fun winter scene. Lots of fun foil with this release. This is the reverse blizzard foilable panels. There are four of two designs. Very, very pretty snowflake design. Absolutely gorgeous for winter cards. This is the snowflake frames foilable panels. You can see you have both the positive and negative for foiling, which is really nice. These work with toner foil. And then this is the ice crystals foilable panels. This is fun because it's kind of like snowflakes, but they're more geometric looking, kind of angular, super cute. And again, you have the positive and the negative for foiling in here. These are the winter fun foilable sheets. So we've got some cute little mittens, snow gear, snowmen, some snowflakes. There are eight pre-printed sheets in this package and each of the sheets is eight and a half by five and a half inches. So if you cut them in half, it's gonna create two card panels. So you can make 16 card panels with this. And then of course, my favorite, the foilable cutups. These are always so handy to have around. Pre-cut ephemera essentially that can be easily foiled. Lots of cute things going on here. Happy winter, hello winter. We've got sentiments, snowmen, snowflakes, large pieces, small pieces. These are so fun because you can just pick out a couple that you need for your card, toner foil them, and they're ready for you to add to your card. Nice and easy, no fussy cutting. <laughs> this is the new cheer foil for the month very pretty, a nice aqua color. It would look great for your winter cards. Very shiny, it's kind of a satiny color, love it. Here we have the Cozy Winter Pattern Papers. This is a sample pack, so it just contains one of each pattern, but the actual pack I believe has three of each pattern. So really cute, fun colors for wintertime cards. I like that they use some colors that are a little different. These are some gorgeous white holographic 
cardstock. Look at this first one. It's nice and it's got this beautiful swirly finish. And then we have this kind of solid iridescent design. And then lastly, more of like a glittery looking piece. All three are absolutely gorgeous. And then last but not least, we have these beautiful iridescent sticky gems. These are the mother of pearl sticky gems, which of course would be perfect for winter cards. I'm going to make two cards today. I'm starting by stamping out all of the main images here from the Cozy Penguin stamp set. I'll go ahead and add some alcohol marker friendly ink on here, just making sure to get nice coverage, stamp those down and lift. And I'm gonna do that a second time. I like to stamp two or three times just so I can make sure I get a really dark solid black line. Now I'm gonna come in with my warm grays to color my penguins. So for the dark portions of the penguins, I'm actually going to start with WG9, which is my darkest warm gray. And I'm going to bring this all the way along the areas that I would consider to be the darkest. So the underside of his little hat, as well as along his back right here. And then I'll bring in my WG7, which is my second from darkest warm gray. And I'm going to pull that all the way out and down. And then I'm going to jump a little bit. And now I'm going to come all the way down to my WG3. I finished with the darkest area of the penguin. Now I'm moving on to the area that's considered kind of white. So I'll bring that along the side, under his flippers, under the book, as well as along his little belly. And then I'll go to my WG1 and pull out that shading just by running my marker along the edges of the line. Lastly, I'll bring in some WG0 and I'll blend that out into the white. I'll repeat that shading on the penguin. Now I'm gonna color in his cute little feet with some 01.3. Since it's a small space, I'm gonna stick with just the one color and I'm also gonna dot his cute little beak. And I do want a little bit of shading here on his arm as well as over the top of his book. So I just brought back in my WG1 for that. I'll bring in some blues for his hat here. I've got some B2.4. I'm gonna start with shading along the edge of the hat as well as back behind the front rim. And then I'm gonna blend that out here in a moment with B2.2 just by running the marker along the edge of the line. And then I'll finish out with some B2.0 right in the center. I'll repeat that again. And then I'm going to bring in some yellow greens. I have some YG 1.6 here. I'm going to bring that around his flippers, blend that out with some YG 1.4. And then on the spine of the book, I'll bring in my YG 1.2. And then I'll repeat that. For the shading on the rest of the hat, I'm going to bring back in my WG0. I ultimately decided to change this to some yellow greens, which you'll see here in a moment. But if you're wanting to have white, remember you also still want to shade that in order to create a little bit of dimension. So here is our finished off first penguin. You might want your penguin to be a lot lighter in terms of shading and that's totally fine to do that. I would just recommend starting with a lighter warm gray when you start. Finish coloring all the penguins the same way. Now I'll come in and color his little scarf in the same blues. I'll color his earmuffs here in the yellow greens. And here's where I come in and change the band and the pom pom. And I'll come in with those same yellow greens to do that as well. His cute little blanket here, I'm gonna color in the same blue. So I'm gonna start here by adding my shading on the edge with some B2.6. And then I'm gonna bring it in here along each side. Next, I'll bring in my B2.4 and I'm just gonna run it along that 2.6, not all the way to the edge of the, the blanket, but just from kind of the middle, and I'm gonna bring it way out. Then I'll bring my B2.2 right in the center, repeat that. For my Christmas tree, I'll use the same yellow greens, but I'm gonna use a bit more of the YG 1.6, so that way my tree turns out darker. So I'm doing flicks here, I'm just gonna extend those flicks going up, towards the center of the tree all the way around. Then I'll bring in my YG 1.4, run it along those, and then my YG 1.2 in the center of the tree, just kind of going down and into that 1.4. I'm gonna repeat that process and it's going to look 
absolutely gorgeous. I've got the same yellow greens to color the plants on either side of the fireplace. So I'm starting with my shading, just going along anything that is behind something else. I'm using my 1.6. Then I'll run my 1.4 along the edges. And again, my 1.2, I colored in anything that was remaining white repeated that. Now I'm going to do some cool grays for my fireplace. I'm going to start here with some CG5 running underneath, running on the area right there behind the front, and then I will run right behind my penguin as well. Then I'm going to add a small shade line on the inset of each of the stones in the fireplace. This is going to help it look 3D. And once I get that done, I'll bring in my CG3 and I'm going to blend out those edges and just barely going right along that CG5. I'm not going too far into it. And then lastly, I'll bring in some CG1 to color the center on all of these bricks. I'll repeat the process a second time to really make these colors blend. And I find that doing the second coloring is really what helps. So if you're struggling with getting things to blend, try coloring it twice. Now I'm going to come back in here with my CG5 because I feel like I lost some of the darkest shading. So I'm going to put that again underneath the mantle as well as kind of behind my penguin. Now I'll bring in CG1 and I'm going to color this entire inset piece and then I'll bring in my CG5 and color the inside of the fireplace. So that way you've got kind of a light and a dark there. For our fire, I started with some O2.5 just right there in the center and then also in the areas where I think there would be some darker spots in the fire and help separate out those flame pieces. Then I'll bring in some Y2.2, which is a nice yellow, and I'll just blend that right into my orange. Repeat that. Now I'm going to bring in some 04.6 and I'm just going to completely color the logs in. They're small. You can't really see them. I didn't feel like they needed any shading. Then I'll use the same 4.6 on the mantle here. So I'll bring it down right along the bottom edge and then I will blend that out with some 04.3. Again, just running right along the edge of the 4.6. Repeat that. And then I'll bring in that same 4.3 and this is what I'm going to use to color and shade the little bags that are holding our plants on either side of the fireplace. So that 4.3, I'm going to bring in all the way around the edges on that. And then I can blend it out with some 4.1. This is going to make them look almost like burlap sacks. And then I'll tie the, everything back in by bringing in our B2.6 to color the trim that's on there. Now I can color the tree trunk. I'll use that 4.6 underneath the bottom of the tree and also in from the sides. And then I will blend that out with my 4.3. Last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and color in our hot chocolate cup. So I'll start with that B2.6 and bring in some shading from around the edges, very similar to how I colored the blanket. So I'll flick towards the center that gives the illusion of making it 3D. I'll bring in the B2.4 and pull out that color. And then I'll just have a tiny little spot in the center, which I'll bring in my B2.2. And again, I will repeat all of that. For the rim of the coffee cup, I'm going to bring in that same B2.2 and just carefully go all the way around. Then I can color our hot chocolate or coffee, whichever you would prefer. And I'm going to do that with some O4.3. And then I'll use some WG0 to color in the marshmallows. And I'll also color in a bit of the snow here. I did decide to darken up his hat and scarf as well. There are all of our cute little penguins in our tree. So I'll go ahead and cut these out here with the coordinating dies. To create our scene, I'm using the stitched rectangle frame dies. I cut them out from white cardstock. I'm going to use this one here and I'm going to back it with some of this light blue paper. I picked this paper because it's going to go on a piece that I cut out from the cozy winter pattern papers. So I wanted a blue that would go well with that. 
So now I can come in and add some glue to the back of my frame and then I can take the frame and I'm just going to lay it over the corner of the blue paper and then trim off the excess around the edges with my scissors. Next, I'll take the largest of those frames, add some glue to the back of that, and I'm gonna lay it over our gorgeous plaid piece that we have here. I created a spot for our sentiment using one of the essential die sets, and so I'm gonna stamp the sentiment that says warm and cozy wishes here in some black ink. Flip, lightly press that down and go ahead and lift. I am gonna stamp this a second time because again, I really like to have nice bold blacks on my card. So I almost always stamp two to three times. All right, now I have everything laid out where I want it to go. So I'm just gonna mark here with a pencil on that sentiment strip so I can see where to cut it down. So I'll bring in my paper trimmer and just cut this right along the line that I've marked. Then I can add some glue all the way to the back here. And now this is gonna tuck in and kind of seem seamless with that frame that goes around the card and have that nice stitch detail. Added some foam tape to the back of that piece and now I can glue down our framed blue paper that we created. So I'll add some glue to the back of that piece and center it right in there and then add my little penguin and fireplace. Now you'll notice I'm putting it over a little bit towards the right of center and that's just because we have our big penguin down there with the blanket and it's kind of heavy visually. So it's pulling towards the left. So just a little tip for you when you're working with images like this, you might need to offset it a little bit from the center to make it look centered. Now I can add glue to the back of the entire thing and adhere this to my card base. For bling, I have Oceanside or Glass Slipper. I think I'll go with Glass Slipper here. I spent a ton of time figuring out where to put my confetti, but now I can come in and glue all of it down. So here is our finished first card all put together. Super cute. All right, I stamped and cut the thoughts of you warm my heart sentiment using the coordinating dies. And then I took some of these little inset pieces that cut out using one of the essential die sets and I hung on to them because they're gonna create little landing spots for our penguins and help them look like they are separated from the background. So I cut down another piece of the pattern paper so that there would be about an eighth of an inch all the way around and this is on an A2 sized card. So I'm gonna set everything aside here, add some glue to the back of this paper. I really like this paper. It has this fun snowfall pattern and it's not like a repeating pattern. So it looks very natural, like real snow. I'll add some foam tape to the back of our sweet little penguin so that they will pop off the white squares. And when I place them on there, I just wanna make sure that they look kinda natural sitting in those little squares. For this piece, I added foam tape on the back side as well as glue on one of the sides. And that's because it's gonna be sitting with the tree as well. Now I can glue all of these squares onto the front of the card. I wanna leave about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So I'm gonna start in the corner with the top right one, then I'll do the bottom left corner, and then I can come in with our centerpiece that has this sweet little tree on there, and I'm just gonna put it in the center between those two squares. I added some foam tape to the back of the sentiment as well, and I'm gonna pop this down here towards the bottom right-hand corner, and and I did go ahead and add in a few pieces of snowfall confetti just to bring the bling. You guys know I like the shine. Now I'll add some glue all the way along the back of this card panel and add it to our card base. So here is our finished first card with those sweet penguins. I just, I still want to just squeeze their cheeks. And then here is the first card that we created as well. All right, everyone, I hope that you picked up some tips and tricks today on scene building and and how to make your items stand out on your card. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so that I can continue to bring you more crafty content in the future. Until next time, happy crafting.